All right. Welcome back to the Board Drill Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Kyle. With me is my co-host, Matt. Tonight, we have a special guest, uh, another great name here, uh, Coach Kyle Stout, uh, who is the OC at Ganana, Ganana, Gabana. G- G- we talked G- about this. I if know. You we just talked about Banana, you can say Gahanna. Come on now. <laughs> I just wanted you to say it again like that. That's right. Gahanna Lincoln High School uh, up in Ohio. Uh, he also uh, is on the 614 Headsets podcast. He's the co-host there. Coach, tonight we're going to talk a little sets and strikes. We're excited to have you on. Welcome to the show. I appreciate having you on. This is, this is kind of fun. Oh, wow. <laughs> the effects, right. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to not have a script. I'm excited to just be a guest. I'm excited to just talk football. So thanks for having me on. Yeah, um, if you're a, a frequent listener, you'll know. But if, if you're a new listener, we don't really do scripts, and we, we never have. I think we tried to script one episode, Matt, and we're like, we're terrible. Let's just, just talk ball. Um, so real quick before we get into it, if you're listening, uh, if you're on YouTube, whatever, hit that like, hit subscribe, you know, whatever on the medium that you're looking at, Spotify, on, uh, on Apple, on YouTube, smash the like, hit subscribe. Please follow us. The more you follow us, the more it helps us, the more it helps us out with uh, you know, when we get to that point, ad revenue, which helps us get more guests on and all that good stuff. So please smash that for us. And without further ado, Coach Stout, let's get into sets and strikes tonight. Let's do it. Well, I'm going to try to multitask here a little bit, but I just want to say, you know, thank you for having me on. Uh, can you guys see this? You guys good? Yep. Yeah. Uh, excited to be on. Like we talked about before we got here, I think this is the one of the greatest times to uh, be sitting here because, you know, we're at a time where, you know, look how much social media has expanded our game and how much we can all learn on it. Um, you know, I tell my wife all the time, she sees me on my phone, she sees me on social media. She's like, did you see this? I said, no, I tell her my <laughs> social media at this point now is all football. That's all, all it football. is. Like you get on there, it's all football. That's all my algorithm is. I don't see all that stuff. Right. Um, so I want to talk about sets and strikes. Okay. You know, a little bit of my background is, you know, I played offensive line in college. Um, I've been a head coach. I've been a coordinator at, at numerous different schools for many years. Um, I'm entering my 13th uh, year of coaching. Uh, but offensive line is always home to me, right? Like I build our offense on that all the time. And uh, sets and strikes has been something that we started uh, this off season, And then it's kind of uh, evolved into what we've been doing and, and growing to get better. And I'll show you some bad in here. And I'm going to show you some good. And I'm going to show you uh, some new drills that our players have been doing as we kind of made a transition to some independent hands and some things. So that's kind of what we're going to get into today. Uh, so just you guys holler at me if you guys have any questions or if something messes up, do that. But, you know, as we start off with a clinic, I wanted to take opportunity to let everybody know how you could reach out to me. You know, there's my Twitter. Um, you know, we talked about, yeah, we have a podcast, too, and a little bit different in this one. We're a little bit more of a, an audio style with video, a little bit more scripted on some topics. And, you know, I love the fact that we're just going to talk ball. Uh, there's our website. And the reason I'm telling you there is our website is because every drill you're going to see later today is on there. All right. For free. It's not at any charge. You don't have to purchase anything. You don't got to subscribe. They're for free. You know, this is something we're trying to do um, for everybody else uh, to get better in this game. Right. That's kind of what we love. You know, one of the benefits we said that we really appreciate with uh, starting our podcast has been all the networking, right? And, and yeah. how many more people we've had the opportunity to talk to from all over in different states and just grow and network together. And that's always been our goal. Uh, just going to put this plug out there in case anybody, you know, needs it, wants it. You know, part of our podcast is we partner with First Down Playbook. I've used just about everything, Microsoft Visio, Just Play, Huddle, you name it, right? And uh, it's phenomenal. You can put your entire community on one playbook, uh, if you use the, the the code headsets24, you'll get $100 off. So $600, you can have your entire community on the same playbook system. Right now, we've got our youth team, middle school, freshman, JV, varsity, all aligned almost on an entire total team software from playbooks, practice schedules, practice scripts, wristbands, you name it, right? So just want to put that out there real quick, give a little plug. For Benny as we go, okay. And uh first down playbook, you you can call me and Matt too. So <laughs> Oh yeah, you guys got a little something something. All right, all right. Then no, we're competing. My bad, my bad. <laughs> I'm saying they can see no, they can hop off with us too. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So hey, I love it, man. I, like I said, if if anybody wants to know more, you want to get a little demo, you want to see it, 
they do have a free trial, but you know, you want to hop on ours and play around with it. You can, um, got to give a shout out to, you know, my staff, uh, and, and give a shout out to my offensive line coach, Donovan White. He, him, him and I partnered together this off season to do this. You know, we've been extremely fortunate to be, um, 25 and three in the last two years at Gahanna Lincoln. Um, we've won two straight conference championships. We've won a regional championship. We've been in the state semifinal. We were undefeated last year, uh, broken 15 out of 18 school records. Wow. Um, we just hit a really good run of like really good players, uh, really good coaches, really good community. And, you know, two years ago, we played 13 straight games on the road because they were renovating our stadium. Um, so the year we went to the final four, our kids played two straight <laughs> home games and the rest of their season was on the road. Um, mm. You know, a big thing we did this off season, we talk about must, right? We call our offensive line the trench mob. Uh, and one thing we did with every unit is we created these must, right? And we talked to our players about to be able to play in this unit on Friday night. Here's what you must be able to do. Okay. And we're going to get into some of these tonight, right? Where we talk about, um, you must be able to, you know, bend and play with great body position, leverage and control. Uh, you must be able to win at the point of attack and overcome defeated positions. You know, you must be a technician and win with your hand placement, hat placement and strikes. Right. And you guys got it. You guys can probably think of your own must. Right. And so we really did this as a staff, too. So we were making sure whatever drills we're doing or whatever we're doing matches that. And so we try to communicate that why to players. We try to match that up with that. Um, and so we kind of have this cohesion of what we're doing. So let's get into it, all right? So pass protection, what are we trying to achieve? I don't know if it's the teacher in me, uh, but I like to start off talking about what's the ultimate goal, right? Our ultimate goal is to put our players in a position to succeed from a game plan perspective. The, one of the very first things we do in game planning is getting into tracking every blitz. Like we'll sit there, we'll draw every blitz, we're going to go ahead and tally it. We're going to create and then create all the data we get, can behind those blitzes. And we're going to try to find a way to get our players hat for hat in our protection scheme with what you do, right? We're going to look at matchups. We're going to try to find to take away your best blitzes or your best player. Um, and our goal is to create a dish that keeps our quarterback comfortable with the ability to step in the throws, right? He can step into it, he can step in the pocket, or he can slide in and out to buy time. And we talk to our players a ton about a huge goal is, is zero pressure, zero sacks. You know, we take really big pride and nobody gets to our guy. Um, and we talk with our, you know, our tackles. Their job is to set and protect the width of the pocket. And up front, guard, center, guard, their, their entire job is to protect the depth of the pocket, right? And so I just want to show a couple of clips, uh, just, uh, just some good as we get started, right? And you can see, you know, we are what you would probably call a combo slide protection. You know what I mean? Where we kind of have a man side, gap side. We have some different rules and some different checks. But I just wanted you to see the end result of how up front, you know, our interior linemen are protecting the depth and our tackles are both protecting the width and our quarterback is completely comfortable standing there and make a throw on third down. Um Coach, real quick, just with Huddle yeah. tonight, we, we know that the best thing on our platform is if you hit the slow-mo button and hold it, it'll show up the best on it for our viewers. Hit the slow-mo. Is that this one? Yeah, so if you right slow-mo it, yeah, it'll show up the best, yeah. All right. That's just for the people watching it. Always, okay. we, we know from all that time that it looks the best in slow-mo. All right. All right. Heart, man. I haven't done that a lot. So I might not. I might <laughs> That's forget right. as we oh, get We'll going, keep reminding right? you. So, you know, as we get going, just show you once again, you know, down here at the left tackle, you can see him setting super aggressive, right? He's getting his hands on. He, he's winning at the point of attack. He's finishing. You know, our running back is, is filling up in where he needs to, and we're protecting that depth of the pocket, right? You know, our quarterback has the ability. It's not a perfect throw, right? Nothing's open. He had the ability to step up in. He has the ability to get out and do something, right? So I just want to show – a little bit of that as we get going. Um, here's, a, here's an example, right? So I'm going to show this. I'm going to pause it, right? We talked about finding a best player right here. Andrew McCollum, he's an all-state player. He was uh, committed to Illinois. I think he was like defensive player of the year even in Division One, or at least at, at some type of a level. Really good player, right? Probably the only player that year we had to create a plan for, right? And that's something big on our uh, game planning sheet and we talk about up front is there somebody we have to 
create a game plan for or do something different from? Is there a guy who could wreck us in the passing game? This guy could. And so, you know, one of the things we did is we actually set our <laughs> gap side to him and we overset him. So that's we would, the three tech, correct? That's the three Sorry. technique. Okay. Yep, right here. This this three technique right here is who I'm <laughs> talking about. Um, we actually slid our protection there and we made a call here on the offensive line that lets our guard actually overset him. You know, a lot of times and what we're going to talk about today is you want to dictate his rush and stay inside out, right? You want to give him a one-way go. Here, we're going to let this guy overset him knowing he can't. So that's going to give him the kind of the confidence that he could really be aggressive and not let him beat him up the field or penetrate too hard because he knows that center is going to come and help him like right now, right? That's all we're going to do. So we're going to overset this guy and we're going to just absolutely trap him. Right. Uh, you know, you think about when you watch kind of NFL and you, you see uh, Aaron Donald. Right. Had to have a plan for him. Had to know where he was, uh, you know, kind of sometimes finding that guy and, and, and setting your protection to him and creating an overset where you just actually two on one and can be a great plan as well. All right. So you guys get the idea. Let's get going here. So you guys get the idea of a good pocket here. Um, all right. We talked to our guys about. Pass protection wise, three things, right? You know, a lot of this, you know, I got to tell you, is for my time being with Coach Geyser, who's now the head coach at Ashton University. Um, Scott Worcester, the head coach at Grand Valley, has some really good stuff too, and some of that's from him too. So I want to give them credit for that stuff. And, and these are some of these collections of things we've collected and done and kind of teach back to our players and believe in. So, you know, in pass protection, we say there's three elements. One, you got to win the set, right? Like you got to get out of your stance, right? You can't be laid out of your stance. You got to take a good first step. Um, so we want to get out of our stance, snap to a good position. We talk about being a, a big arch, you know, arch, big butt, big chest, you know, take away maybe what that one uh, defender's advantage is. If he's a bull rush guy, I'm going to get my feet in the ground. I'm going to protect that ground, right? If he's a speed guy, I got to go, you know. Uh, two, we're going to set to the spot, right? I think everybody kind of knows what that is. But I want to set to the point uh, of that angle of intersection, right? I got to put myself between the defender and the quarterback. You know, obviously, the tighter he is to me, the flatter of a set I'm going to take, right? I might pick it up, put it down with my feet. The wider a guy is, man, now I'm talking, hey, am I going to short set this? Am I going to kick slide it? If it's a really wide rusher, we might have to start talking about a little vertical set, right? You think about Joe Thomas and how he made his hay in the day. And then I don't know what you guys see a lot uh, at your part, right? You talked about Florida, but we see a ton of odd fronts. Um, you know, there's times there was one year I didn't see an I didn't see an even front till like week six, um, <laughs> and so we see a ton of odd fronts with a lot of slant angle fire zone blitzes. And so when we're head up, you know, we have to talk to our players about you know if I'm on the if I'm man on man on that guy, I gotta you know take away what's the most dangerous, right? I gotta take away the inside. So we talk about a soft post, establish your position, you know, get your feet in the ground, you know, ready to battle, ready to read and react, right? You know, I told you we're a combo protection, so on our gap side, we spend a ton of time about setting to build a wall, setting together. You know, we don't want to be on different planes. And not undressing the slide with our eyes. You know, I tell our players, if I'm looking from the practice field or from the film, I'll literally see you with your head turned into your gap and you're trusting that your buddy's back inside of you, right? Uh, not chasing things back inside and not seeing too much, right? So win the set, get out of your stance, set to the spot, you know, on that defender, set to that uh, point of intersection and then dictate the rush, right? You got to give them a one-way go. You know, I played offensive line, you know, at one point in time, I was about 290 some pounds and you're playing a lot better athletes than you at times, especially today. And you have to make it so, you know, hey, he has to go around you or through you, right? Uh, he has to definitely, I don't want to get myself in a position where I overset a defender and now he has a two-way go on me. And so we talk about our players like that is a worse position to be in. You do that. And, and, and now you're giving a more athletic guy a free, you know, free idea to just do whatever he wants. Counter you, come back inside, set you up. Uh, so we talk a lot about our outside knee, not patching, you know, not passing the midline of the defender, the crotch, the nuts, whatever you want to say. Like our varsity guys, we say the nuts, right? You know what I mean? Uh, today we were working with Pee Wee guys. And we just said, hey, the midline of the defender as there's parents around. Right? <laughs> 
Uh, and, and, you know, as always, like your job as an offensive lineman, you want to stay as square as you can for as long as you can, right? The longer I can keep my shoulders and hips square and I'm set and nice and short and flat. And we talk a lot about, you know, winning first touch, right? A big belief all the way back since college was, you know, being ingrained of that meaningful first touch is probably going to win the rep or more oftentimes does. All right. Uh, got a Coach, couple clips real yeah. quick. Sorry, let me get, can you go back two slides? Yeah, sure. This one. All right. I am a, no, keep going back. Keep right going. Back. Yeah. Well, 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 here you go. Oh. No, no, it was on the, is on the written part right there. Um, so look, I'm just a lowly defensive guy. I don't understand all this offensive line stuff okay. all the time. I know. Most all right. of, what is a soft post? Okay. Soft post is going to be, I have a guy. So we talk about your post foot and your kick foot. Right. Our post foot is always our inside foot. Okay. And so whatever side of the line you're on, right? If you're on the right side, your post foot's your left foot. Right. If you're on the left side, your post foot's your right foot. Thinking about your stagger, right? Yeah. And so if I'm if I have a guy head up on me, the most the worst place I could get beat right now is inside, right? Yeah. If I'm trying to be inside out. So when we talk about soft post, we're literally going to take that inside foot. And we're going to pick it up and put it down back inside. It might move four to six inches just inside and flat. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, and that way, from that position, I've reestablished myself back inside out to now where I could read and react in battle. Right? If the guy tries to slant inside, I'm in a great position where at least I'm head up or I'm ready to go. Right? If he tries to slant outside, perfect. I'm going to go ahead and now and kick or kick side or drive kick with him back to where I need to be. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, Coach, it's amazing how the way you describe that and talk about playing square is the exact same way we teach defensive backs how to play man coverage. Yeah. It, we talk about that same thing of leverage on the inside foot, stay square as long as you can, have the first meaningful touch, right? If you're going to jam, you know, you got to get that. And it's it's unreal how how similar that is. And we coach completely different sides and completely different positions, completely different athletes. So that's Absolutely. A, right. It's a pretty There's, unique piece. There. It's, it's pretty interesting how, how you can do things or if you, you get a chance to play, a, even have the opportunity to coach on both sides of the ball, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, yeah I'd never ahead. seen that played. I'd never seen that called a soft post. A post. Uh, we okay. always called it a, uh, just a quick set or a quick step, you yeah. know, that we're, we're <laughs> setting the inside. Yep. Uh, but it's so important to have those defined in your offense and important that, your offensive line are moving off that first step because you don't want them to get used to, hey, I got to head up guys, so I'm just going to try to, you know, wait on them to come to me. I got to make the first move. But what you yeah. said was really great about speaking the same language, right? And so that's mm -hmm. what we tell, you know, our players is we all have to speak the same language together from a defensive identification yeah. to alignments to this is an odd stack. This is a three, four balance. You know, this is an over front. This is a shade coach. He was right there. Where, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and I don't know about you. I coach from the box, right? Yeah. So I coach from the box as the offensive coordinator. Some games I'm on the, uh, I'm on the field when the headsets don't work. I'm on Bruce Ward. Give me some new headsets. Right. Uh, and, and all that. But, you know, I tell our kids in order for us to make corrections fast, we got to speak the same language about everything. Yeah. And I think it's, a, it doesn't matter what you're calling it. Soft post, whatever you said, as long as your kids understand what that is, that's, that's what's truly important. Right. And so that's what yeah. we teach our kids and that, you know, practice one, that's what we're talking about. Like, Hey, we got to speak the same language together. So a couple of clips here, this is a couple of years ago. Um, you know, you, on the left here, I'm going to show you a bad example. I'm gonna show you some bad today. I'm not gonna show you everything great. Right. I'm gonna show you some bad examples, some good examples on the left here. Really bad example of a soft post, right? This is uh, the playoffs playing an odd front team. Uh, you know, a little bit different protection here, what we're going to do. So we've got some different man blocking rules kind of built in. Um, but you can see on the left side, we're going to get a, a bad example of soft post of staying square. And then on the right side, a good example. Let's slow-mo. Yeah, slow-mo. There we go. Look at that. I, I hate the way 63 turns his hips on this, right? Like that's way too big of a step. He's hopping out of it. His hips aren't staying square. Now, he's a pretty good player. He's a Division One player uh, at this point. Our right tackle, he's a Division One player too, right? But he's doing a much better job of, of staying square. Soft post, getting in the ground. Now I'm ready to react in battle. Yeah, he won the rep, but it's not great. Like, and if any of us ever played college ball, you know how it goes. Like, you get nitpicked for everything, whether you do win it or not. So, yep. Uh, Here's a good idea, right? We talked about, you know, as you pass set, you know, 
pass setting is all about rhythm, angle, and space. Like you got to get big guys comfortable of setting to a spot and being in space and keeping their body and hands and everything in a great position to where they'll win the set when it comes time for it, right? So here's another example, all right? We've got a little bit of a 5-2 box here. Eight was probably one of the fastest kids off the edge this season, right? This this kid's super fast. They wide nine him. Our tackle's going to have to set to him. Our guards are going to have to set here. And uh, he just does a really good job kind of embodying a lot of those principles we talked about, about setting to the spot. He's under control. He even gives a little flash of hands here. I don't know if you meant to or not, right? That could be a good kind of thing we talk to our players sometimes, too, about a lot of these defensive linemen are taught to throw a chop or throw a move off of a certain step. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he's going to set and sometimes just flash in those hands real quick. Gives them that eye candy where it throws everything off. So he's going to set here. He does a really good job staying inside out, taking away the inside, protect that width of the pocket. That's a that's a tough set, man. When you've got a really good speed rusher off the edge, this is a really good team. In fact, this is the same team we went and saw uh, in the regional final uh, just after that, right? All right, so here we go. Left tackle here does a really good job. This is last season of a strike and an anchor, right? Anytime, you know, you can see chest, take chest, jam, grab, anchor, own the rep, it's done. The left guard here, he's a young pup. He does a really bad job of oversetting, right? He's going to overset. Actually, he's not a young pup. He's an old guy. This was, he didn't have a good game this game, right? Left tackle, good job, controlling, comfortable, hands inside, game over. Like, look at the way he just grabs his chest. You know, we were talking to our we we did sets and strikes with our youth league today. We had all of our youth league linemen come over, and we did a little camp with them, all about sets and strikes today. And just said one of the biggest things is anytime a guy straight rushes you and gives you his chest, jam, grab, anchor, game over. But you can see here, right, left tackle is just going to overset this way too far, right? That's a really good athlete. Like he's probably one of the better D linemen in the area. I'd probably put him top three. And you give that guy that type of space, bad things are going to happen. Okay. Uh, you guys know I said twist. You're good. Here we go. Okay. Hand carriage. So we get in the hand carriage, right? Uh, this is one of the coolest things Scott Worcester said. I really stole from, you know, watching a click on him. He talked about your hands and arms are your sword and your shield, right? And so we're going to talk about hand carriage. And that's kind of what the rest is going to turn into a little bit about my transition from moving from how I was coached, right, with a double hand punch, touch punch style, into more independent hands, which has become kind of the, the, the way of doing things now. Um, and so we talk about our hands, right, being your sword and your shield. Well, you're going to attack with them, right? We talked about the goal for us is to get meaningful first touch. And guys who do, right? Usually you stop their charge, you break the defender's leverage, you're going to win that rep most of the time, right? So you're attacking with them. And, you know, pass pro does not have to be passive, which we've all heard, right? And in your shield, right? What do I mean by that? You got to protect your chest, right? One of the worst things you could do, and you just talked about DB's coaches, right? Like I talk to our receivers yeah. all the time, like you got to protect your chest. Like our defense plays a ton of press, man. They get in your, they get in your face, everything, and, uh, you know, we're three years in and we're still trying to teach our young kids about, hey, is he close enough that I got to have my hands up or not? You know what I mean? Everybody wants to have these hands down and crossed over and look pretty. I don't know what it is. But, <laughs> you know, we talk a ton about, hey, like, hey, is he is he in my stuff or not? Right. Like, yeah, if he's close enough to me that I got to worry about it, I got to have my hands up to where I have to have my shield. Right. I'm going to protect my body to keep the defender off of me. Right. And so when we talk about our hands, as we talk about being independent hands, we're going to carry the hands in front of the hips. Our elbows are at our ribs. Our elbows are almost flexed in, right? We talk about squeezing our armpit hairs, right? And we have flex wrists. So, you know, you can kind of see my, you know, almost like a 90 degree bend. My hands are up. My elbows are in. I'm ready to strike from there. My hands are low and apart uh, to ensure if a defender gets one hand, you still have the other. And that's what I'm going to show you a little bit. When we used to do two hand punches, if you went to punch with both hands and you missed or you got chopped or you got swatted or whatever, you were dead. So at least with independent hands, as I try to stack my hands on your body wherever I can at targets, if I get one swatted, I still have a great chance to win with the other, right? Um, 
And so that's kind of a, a big thing that we're going to get into as we get going, right? So I told you about my old, right? I, you know, I, for many years, coached the way I was coaching. And it's not necessarily wrong. It still works really well, you know, but we talked about old school, punch, punch, two-handed punches. We talked about Wu-Tang hands where your hands almost made a W, right? <laughs> <laughs> I added the Wu-Tang yeah. later. My college coach did not talk about Wu-Tang. I'm going to tell you that right now, <laughs> right? So we talked about our Wu-Tang hands, right? That's what we talked about. It. And, you know, thumbs up, elbows were under. And we carried this W position of the hand somewhere between the nipples and the belly button, wherever our kids were comfortable, right? And we talked about hands were light in space and heavy on contact. That still holds true with independent hands. But when you think about it, right, today's pass rushers are elite, man. Like, they're super athletic. All they, like, you got, I, I talked about, you got Aaron Donald sitting here working pass rush moves with knives, man. Like, they, they this, this is all they do, right? And so in our league, the defensive ends are f- phenomenal, right? Like, I coached against and coached Jack Sawyer, right? Starting defensive end for Ohio State now, probably going to be a first-round draft pick. Zach Harrison, right, Ohio State Buckeye in the NFL, right? Larry Johnson. Larry Johnson was at Penn State when I was at Penn State. So I just saw everything he did, and you can see how elite guys are, right? And also, what I hate about if your hands are kind of already up and together <laughs> and like that, you're giving the defensive lineman a clear picture to work off of, right? Like, you're inviting it. You're carrying your hands out in front of you, and you're saying, come on now, come, you know, grab, pull, swim, chop, do whatever it is. I don't know. I I don't like the defense, but, you know, they do all that crap. It's like this, right? (laughs) So I pulled you a bunch of examples, right? And this is how we used to do it. And look, at the highest levels of football, NFL and college, you're seeing two hands tighten inside, old school, punch, punch, double-handed strike, Wu-Tang hands. Right. Here you go. You can see it a little bit. Right. And so this was the way I coached for years because, you know, that was the way I was taught. And that's kind of what everybody does. Um, and you're going to see, though, that's that's not necessarily good. Right. Um, so, you know, I'm going to show you a little bit here. You know, our right tackle here, he's going to he's going to bring that that Wu-Tang punch here a little bit. You're going to see. He misses. See that chop right there. So right now by, you know bringing both hands together at the same time versus stacking them, he's in a defeated position. I mean, thank God the quarterback got rid of the ball, right? So, like I said, it's going to be a little bad here. Don't judge me too hard off this film, okay? Um, So here we go. This is the the state semifinal. Um, I'm going to tell you a little funny thing. Let me just might turn a good clip for you. But there's no worse feeling than deciding that, hey, you're going to set the protection to this guy who was committed somewhere D1. And then you come out to later find out, oh, well, guess what? He was the district player of the year over here, but he's also committed D1. <laughs> uh, this is Lakewood St. Ed's, if you've ever heard of them. Um, I don't know, kids from about 80 counties. They're a private school. They do pretty well. I think they just won their fifth straight championship or something like that. But, um, you know, you can see here, right tackle. Look at those hands just out and just too far away from his body inviting to be countered and moved you can talk about earlier we talked about right setting to the spot and dictating the rush like put a way more athletic guy i think he was committed to coastal carolina i think that's where he was committed to uh just in space bad trouble probably being a little lazy knowing him that year too coach and uh, and from my experience (laughs) that's a big part of it what you're talking about the two-handed punch invites the player to extend hands, hips, everything, For sure. shoulders. It invites the player to extend. But when you separate it, now you're using independent hands. Now it forces them to sit back in their stance. It's uh, funny. I mean, do you see the same thing? Yeah. I, you know, we talk a lot about it, I, it's that back shoulder, too, a little bit, at least for a tackle. That was my biggest thing in college, too. When you double-hand punch – you bring that back shoulder to the D lineman to now they have something to grab and counter and pull and work off of too. Right? Mm-hmm. It becomes very hard to protect that back shoulder. You got to kind of have a lean and almost pull it back and protect it. It's funny where I'm showing you all these bad, but you know, this kid who I've highlighted, it's probably the best independent, independent hand striker I've had yet. He, he's, he's now at Toledo uh, and you're going to see a lot of good in the future too. So it's just kind of funny how that happens here. But uh, Centerville game, this was the, the sole game we lost that year, right? Double hand punch. 
And uh, that's what ha- that's what we're talking about, right? When you bring both and you miss, right, you're dead. You have no chance to keep playing through it. You know, for example, if he would have set maybe and he had his independent hands and he tried to stack his inside hand and outside hand, he might got to got that inside hand on that keeps him wide for just a sec, right? You know what I mean? All right, so evolution, right? We talked about where we're going to get into. You know, independent hands is still a transition for us. And I'll tell you, the the drill film I'm going to show you, this is the first time from this film our players did it, right? So there's you're going to be like, well, this guy's crazy, right? He's saying it has to be this and it's not that. Well, it's the first time. It's a transition, right? Um, We thought, like, hey, we're going to make this big transition. Let's film it. Let's make it a part of something everybody else get better out of. So there's some good and there's some bad in there. The thing we like about it is many of our same coaching points as before still hold true, right? We're going to carry hands light in space. What do I mean about that? When kids set with their hands kind of heavy or flexed, anytime you get chopped or swatted or those hands or arms get hit, your whole body goes with it, right? So now we've ruined our leverage, right? So we want our hands light in space so we can counter and hand fight and heavy on contact, right? We want to strike, grab an anchor. We want to get meaningful first touch. One of the coolest things about independent hands is our hands are low and they're striking. A lot of guys think there's a lot of carryover from the run game. So as you're working some of your run game out of your stance, there's a lot of same as to where, you know, we all fight for time. I don't know about you guys. I get about 50 minutes as my max I get in the week with guys. And that's not all 50 minutes of the O line. So anytime you can have a lot of same as or carryover, it really helps. Um, it allows your old offensive line to hand fight better. And, uh, you know, for us, we talk a lot about different strike points, where to stack our hands, hand fighting, and then winning from defeated positions. I don't show a lot of defeating positions here, but I think you have to give your offensive line a plan. You got to give them drills about, I'm getting bold, what do I do? Guy's got my chest, what do I do? Right? I think you got to give those di- – a guy gives me the, the classic long arm stab inside. How do I get it off my body? I think you have to have those answers – because it won't always be pretty for your guys. All right. So like I said, we moved to a little bit more independent hands. And now you can see it a little bit different, right? I don't want to go all the way back, but you know, different levels here again. And you can see kind of the hand carriage, how it's a little bit different, how the hands are spread apart, the elbows are in, they're almost sometimes at different levels, right? And they're from low to high, ready to strike and hit where they can, right? And so this has been the big evolution we've we've gone through. This next one here, All right? Get to some good here, finally, right? So right tackle, really good job here of uh, on his set, his jam, his grab, his anchor, right? He's going to – and he made me slow-mo. Look what you did to me, man. Here we go. <laughs> All right? I'm trying to get this right. All right, here we go. Right tackle, <laughs> really good job playing in space. Really good job, right? Look at the way he clamps those hands in that time, right? He's going to clamp – excuse her, whoever just needs to. Yeah. Pick up everything nowadays, right? Here we go. Really good job of just independent hands setting and striking. Uh, you know, this kind of a really cool game for us. Uh, you know, me personally, didn't know if I was gonna make it to this game. My son was born um the day before this game, right? Oh wow. And so the whole build up of the week was like my wife it was gonna be our second kid. Whole build up of the week was like, guys, I know if I'm gonna make this game. My wife is literally due on the biggest game of the year. Right. This was always our arch nemesis. This is Pickerington Central. They've won a couple of different state championships. This was like the team we had to get over two years ago and beat to kind of get to where we are now. Um, and I, I told him, I don't know if I'll make it. I'm teaching in class. My wife says, hey, not going to happen today. And then 20 minutes later, she goes, you got to leave right now. You got to leave. Go. You got to go. <laughs> like, we're having the baby today. I'm like, oh, my God. Right. I'm actually zooming and going through the game plan with my quarterback. And I got to get I'm like, hey, man, like I got to get off or you're going to be in this delivery with me right now. Because um, we would meet once or twice. I, I meet about twice a week with my quarterback and we go through the game plan and different clips together. Right. Um, but a really cool moment. Right. We built this game up. We knew it was going to be big. We came out and had a monster game. We won like 40 something to 14 or seven. I don't know what it was, but. Really cool moment of just having a son sprinting to the game, getting there as the team's warming up, having a big game, uh, and just it was a really special weekend to me. Uh, This is a really good job of just showing about wide rush, outside leverage, right? Left tackle is going to do a really good job setting inside out, 
and taking that away, right? I think I got another another idea here, right? Really good idea about right here when we talk about on the gap side. If you ever have a defender go wide, we talk about knocking him wide, right? So if you got an outside shade, you're setting to him. If he goes wide, knock him wide, right? Expand that width of the pocket. Inside here at right guard, right? Talk about winning from defeated positions. He's high, right? This guy has his hands inside. He's on his frame. And so we talk a lot about hop, hop, and steer, right? You got to imagine like, oh, my God, there's a cliff behind me. I'm trying to stop the car from falling off the cliff. I got to hop, hop. I got to spread my base. And I got to get my leverage back, right? So you see a little bit of good from, from all that, right? Okay, another Coach, good idea. At, yeah. At the beginning of the previous play, mm -hmm. you had a little note about the outside hand. Can you kind of talk a little bit about setting that outside hand and what you guys are aiming for, um, what you're looking for out of that first set? So you know, we talk a lot about, as we transition outside hands, and this is from Scott Worcester, he talks a lot about on your outside hand going to the swoosh or the logo. His big belief was if I could take my outside hand and I could attack where a logo would be on your uniform, how a lot of times that stops the charge or breaks the leverage of the, the rusher. Um, so if we can, we're going to try to stab and get our hand inside or, or attack that logo, right? He does a really good job. See how he misses, right? But at least mm -hmm. he, he gets it in, though. You know what I mean? He's a little wide. Like in a perfect world, you would say, hey, you're outside of his frame. But that's kind of what, when you get into learning or learning from other people about independent hands, what they talk about. Trying to take your outside hand to the logo or to the swoosh, so almost you stop or you break that defender's leverage. And his big point was, if I could get that hand there, how it stopped and changed and changed their whole rush, if that makes sense. It kind of took away a lot of their steam. Okay, a little bit here, you know. Left tackle does a really good job here set to the spot. This is a wide rush, right? This is probably an outside linebacker type. I'm pretty sure it was with the way they do their defense about getting in space. But look at the way he carries his hands here, right? Elbows in, hands are independent, a little wide, and he stacks them and gets them in, All right? This is, a, this is a really good example of talking about that transition to those hands and doing things. And look at that dish. Right. And so, hey, I tell our guys everything. We got a pro style quarterback that can make every throw in the field. He's committed to Kentucky. Uh, Brendan Ward, head coach's son, absolute blessing. Right. I don't know if I can ever coach another quarterback after having him. <laughs> um, but it, it's a really special bond together, just how much time we get to put in together. And when you get a guy who just lives and dies football, you know, we talk about, hey, man, we got a special guy back there. Our job has got to be, like, make him comfortable. Like, let him make every throw he wants, right? And good things are going to happen. Okay? Enough of this, right? You Coach, gotta, one, yeah. one thing I've noticed that is, like, the kiss of death for defense is you just see so many guys head up on your tackles. And, like, obviously when we teach pass rush, we always teach to work half a man, yeah. right? You know, unless you're straight able – even when we teach bull, you want to work half the man in bull. For sure. You know? And it's just impressive to see how many times your tackles get those guys head up. And we tell them all the time, like, you're dead if you're head up on that guy. So, I mean, how, we do this all the time, right? We're coaches. How many times do you coach something <laughs> or say something and it doesn't get done, though, right? Oh, correct. Yeah. And I mean, so, you know, that brings up a good point. When we talk about that, we talk about eyes. Okay. Let's talk yeah. about eyes as offensive linemen, right? We train our guys that their eyes are right in the numbers, right at the, right at the chest, right? really athletic defensive linemen. They're going to head fake you. They're going to shoulder shimmy. They're going to have a lot of movement right above their chest. Yep. And if you focus on that, you're dead, right? And so a big thing about independent hands, or we talk even about strikes, right, is you have to calm your body down, right? Your lower body's moving. Your upper body's relaxed. Your eyes are focused where they need to be so you could stack and place your hands where they need to be, right? And so that was a really good point you brought up. So we could even talk about eyes as we get going. So uh, some of this here, the, the first set of drills I'm going to show you is all strike drills, right? We're just learning how to strike and do things. I don't know about you guys, but 
we cannot find facility space in the, the winter and spring to save our life, right? So a lot of times we just have to work the space we have, right? Might be a gym, might be in the weight room. We have these uh, different strike machines. I don't know if you guys have them. They're great if you have a chance to get them. If you don't have them, it's no big deal. Just have somebody else hold the, the, the dang hand shield, right? Move your hand shields in for the winter, <laughs> right? Uh, but it's just a luxury we have, so we use it, right? But right here, we're just working right now. Sometimes there is a straight rush, right? This is a you're going to combine some of this old school touch punch straight ahead, right? Knife in the wrist, elbows in. I think he, I think you know, this is Jake Grimm. I think he's leaning a little too far forward, right? Here we are doing it again. This is Evan Daly. Evan, uh, Evan committed to Temple last year, uh, so he's at Temple now. I think he's a little loud up top. You know what I mean? I think he's just he's a little loud with how. His head and everything is tied to it. But we're just working a straight ahead jam. Just working a bunch of strikes for time on this one. Uh, our next. All right. Slow down for you. All right. Coach, yeah. you may want to kick the audio off on that. <laughs> is it <laughs> on? Yeah. Okay, cool. Because I couldn't hear it on my end. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Sorry if you're listening. That just popped in yours. It popped in ours too. So. Cool. <laughs> it's funny because it didn't pop in mine at all. So I appreciate it. All right, so we're going to go a little high-low here, right? Learn how to stack our hands at different positions. You know, the back guy there, he's got to sit down a little bit more. He's, he's a little too high-hipped. He's not in a really good, you know, kind of chair position, reverse arching his back. This is after the end of a workout. And I'm pretty sure our strength corner probably destroyed him that day, knowing him. <laughs> All right, so now we talk about alternating corners. Like, this is a good one where you talk about you get a speed rusher off the edge, right? Where they're trying to dip that inside shoulder. You got a really small surface. Sometimes I got to learn how to stack my hands on what surface is available, right? And so we'll work a little alternating corners uh, on that, right? I like that. That's That's awesome. Yeah, it's a big thing. I, I so I don't know. It's kind of interesting, right? Like, you know, I played at division 1 level, I played at division 2 level. One of the things I saw was when you I always loved going against a bigger defensive end. I know if I went against a bigger, taller defensive end as a taller offensive tackle, I was going to get a lot more straight rush. I wasn't going to be as worried with the speed rush, right? He's going to give me that chest. I'm going to have a surface stack my hands. The guys that worried me were those guys who were the converted linebackers, right? put a little weight on fast off the edge. They really learned how to on that second and third step, dip that inside shoulder and give you that small surface, right? Almost playing like at the ground, right? And so you got to learn how as a speed rusher, or small surface, how to put your hands on, on different places. So we'll work a little alternating corners, right? And then we get into just, just punching single hand, right? I'd like to see him sit in a better position. The guy in the back's doing a much better job staying square. Right. But just learning how to throw your punch, thumb up, elbow in, using your tricep, using your lats. Right. Just strikes, man. And, you know, what's cool. This is cheap for us. Like we set this up. We could spread out and, you know, we could tell our kids, even if we're there not for a day, we'll tell them, hey, need you to go ahead and do these uh, sets and strikes today. Right. Or we could take 10, 15 minutes and just work something after a workout. Now we're going to work a little redirect, right? So we're going to move in a little pass sets. So we're actually going to set to the spot inside and then kind of kick back outside here. And we're going to work a little kick redirect and we're going to time the jam with a med ball, right? Med balls are great. If you're not using med ball, shame on you. All right. <laughs> Cheapest thing you could get. Okay. Great idea. You know, we run block on them to kind of recreate a real surface. Right. And we're just working set into a spot inside. You get a strike. So now we're layering drills, right? You got a strike, you got a set, time in the jam, time in your strike. Good stuff. This is a new one for us. Just with this, I got this from Scott Worcester, right? Setting a little bit, learning how to put your hands at the high low spot. Uh this is our this is our next our next guy we think is gonna be a dude. He would have probably started for us as a sophomore last year, but he, he played a few games for us. Uh, but just learning how to add a little resistance, do something different, strike my hands and set at different positions, right? These guys want variety, right? Like this guy doesn't play any other sport. I'm not saying that's right. He just doesn't though, right? And you, I don't know about you guys, but there's a lot of <clears throat> trainers around our area. Some good, some bad, right? 
Mm-hmm. You got to give your kids opportunities to get better and invest in them, or they're going to go work with other guys and bring back a lot of bad habits. And so that's kind of what we spend a little bit of time at, at doing the summer is breaking some of these habits. So with a guy that's with you from the moment football's done, like we get 30 days off in Ohio and then we're right back up. You got to give yeah. these guys a lot of variety and keep it fresh and do different things for them. Um, and they're going to go other places too, right? You got to tell them that's okay, but you got to kind of correct some of that as time goes on. Here we are on the field, right? We're just going to work a little just on our back, time in the jam, just learn how to knife our wrists and punch. Okay. So that's kind of what we do, some strike stuff. There's a lot of other things. Like sometimes we'll set and we'll strike a tennis ball as it comes to us. You know, we'll set and strike different pads. You know, there's, you know, I've seen different paths. You could take a heavy bag and pull it back and kind of short set to it and punch to it. You no, know, but those are some of the more concrete things that, that we do. Uh, yeah, we get, no, coach, I, yeah. I love those drills, uh, from the main set of, we spend a lot of time talking on the show about strength and conditioning, everything we did the last couple episodes on it. We, you know, we're feed the cats guys, or at least I am Yeah, Matt's on the thing, but those are low impact, right? High return drills that you just did. None of those drills are going to completely gas your kid, but you're getting high technique for a quick rep. You're working on that strike and all that. And you could probably do a bunch of those reps and your kids are, are fine afterwards. I think those are, are fantastic drills for that, especially the last one you showed. I mean, it's just kid laying on his back, right? He's punching. But other than that, he's laying on his back. So, I mean, that's such yeah. a good drill where it's, you're not spending a lot on that kid, if that makes sense. And you know, like you're I not said, taking anything out of the gas tank. Facility space is so hard for us, yeah. right? Like it's winter. Right. And if it's super bad outside, we're not going outside. I mean, and I'll tell you right now, we'll, we'll take our kids outside when we're like, you know, 30s, 40s, you know, to get some work. We'll do it. Uh, but every gym is full. Every gym is booked. So we have to get creative. Like sometimes we're working in a hallway. Right. Yeah. We're working in a hallway. We're working there. You know, we're doing those <laughs> drills on the other side of the weight room is a whole nother team. Right. So we got to find how can we do something in a short amount of time that's still making our players better throughout the season or the off season, I should say. Right. Yeah. So getting into the sets, right. One of the very first things we do is learning, excuse me, that first step, right. We talked about the three fundamentals of a pass set, right. Is, is win the set, right. Get out of your stance. And we, we talk a lot about a clown foot, right. Getting your outside leg or your kick foot, right into a good ankle outside of knee position like front guy here gabe this is trash right he's stepping for i don't know what he's doing right right he might listen to gabe i'm sorry but you know it is right okay (laughs) (laughs) guy behind him alex alex started for us as a sophomore at guard just a real bulldozer type Uh, we try to put you know based on our philosophy we try to put our bigger guys are road graders inside we're a big inside zone duo counter type of a team so we really want road graders there um, he's getting a little far here that guy or i should say that the third guy luke there is probably doing it the best right just a small boom snap boom get into your stagger ankle outside a knee head back big butt big chest right when, getting ready to win from your set from that point right all right, so we do a kick over the line. Another good one. You guys probably see this a lot with stretch, right? We call this drive catch. So I'm going to put my outside leg or my outside knee down on the med ball. And so all we're trying to give our players the reference is of driving off your inside foot, right? We want to drive off that post foot, drive catch, drive catch, drive catch, without picking our you know, feet too far off the ground. A lot of times you'll see this drill with stretch, right? You'll see guys put their outside knee down on the med ball and they're teaching their players to really rock it and push and sprint off the ball off that inside foot, right? Same idea, right? Turn his hips a little bit there. Same idea, but now we're just doing it from a pass, pass pro perspective, right? Okay. Just giving our guys different ways to feel. I, I don't know about you. I never was a big believer in the cones or the, you remember those discs that they had that you put your feet on? I thought those were the dumbest things in the world. (laughs) Right. And and people wanted to buy us some and do stuff. I said, I will never use those. Get those out of my face. 
They, and, and hey, the Charles Bartley, I might be wrong. I don't know. I just thought they're dumb, right? <laughs> and so, another, you know, yeah. we, we don't get the most athletic guys. And so sometimes we'll try to combine, you know, some agilities with some drills, right? So now we're working a little push at a little post, right? Set and jam, grab, anchor. This is This is literally just us getting our guys warmed up, right? So we're working something agility wise, right? We're working us, we're working a post and we're going to work a strike jam grab acre at the end. Donovan's a little bit younger than me. So he gets to hold the ball, right? Coach little, yeah. is um, this player taking this rep. Is he the best hairdo on the team? Uh, he's got a great waterfall. It's, yeah, absolutely. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's, it is. He embodies the spirit of a lineman. In fact, his nickname is pop tart. Oh yeah, that's yeah. a good okay. one. <laughs> He's good. definitely a lineman. Yeah, his, <laughs> that's his, a good so one. his his brother played here. His brother wanted to play college. He's a really good player. He's not the tallest, but he is probably one of the best pullers we've had in a while. I mean, a true pull with nasty intent type, right? Yeah. And so, really excited to have him back. Really excited to have the other kid back, uh, and, and some other guys. Right. So next thing <laughs> is we talk about win the set individual sets. Okay, just setting to a guy at different shades or different spots on your body, right? We talked about the tighter a shade is to me, the more I'm going to pick him up, put him down, right? The wider a guy is, the more I got to maybe set on an angle, right? But all we're working here, no contact, no nothing. Just how, just setting to the spot, staying inside out, trying to really focus hard on my outside leg doesn't go past that midline or the very worst the inside of that knee right that's all we're working right here is setting to these different spots that's it just this is another great thing you can do you you mentioned low impact now we're going to soft post right you got inside <laughs> shades here right so now we're going to work now we're going to work to soft post guys inside of me i got to get back to a good position I got to get back to head up. That's our landmark, right? I got to get back to head up. So we'll put guys a little wider. Now we're going to travel our body a little bit more, right? So, right, we do that from an individual standpoint. And then we're going to go ahead and just tie three reps together, right? Let me get my mouse going here again. We're going to tie three reps together. We're going to let that defender line up anywhere he wants. Hey, tight, head up, inside, outside, double outside, I don't care. Right, go ahead and give them three reps, and we're gonna rapid fire. Go ahead and just set to these spots. Right, that's what we want to do on that one. Next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna slide around and we're gonna move our body kind of flat here. We're gonna push. We're gonna post. We're gonna use the PVC pipe to give our players the reference of being big butt, big chest. Right, your head, your chest goes behind your knee. You're down in your chair, big butt, big chest. That PVC pipe kind of kind of almost like when you squat, right? Your best squatters, air balls they go up, are able to kind of dip their elbows under and lift up, right? We're gonna kind of do the same here. Just trying to work laterally, keeping a band tied around our legs, right? Not being Dorothy's clicking our heels, right? <laughs> I, I, and I keep this is something I've done too. If you're gonna do this, right, you're gonna go to your home depot and chop these up and make these. Don't let your guys hold them like this. This is something we caught. They're like medieval prisoners in the old school shackles here, right? <laughs> like, and it messes with the thing. They, I, I, we've transitioned to be like, you got to hold it in your hands. Like, you're, you're working against your body. You guys are wrapping your arms around and you're forcing your chest down. So that's something we caught as we did more of this, right? But we just want to work big butt, big chest, being lateral, keeping our stagger, right? Big thing Coach, about, another you know, point to your previous yeah, your your previous drill you were doing where you had them in different locations uh simulating the rush. Yeah. A lot of times spot, coaches yeah. yeah, a lot of times coaches we get stuck in, hey, we're just going against our defense every day and we're seeing the guys in the exact same spot. You get to a game yeah. and and the guys rushes differently and, and you, you if your player hasn't seen it, you know, in those situations, um it may be something he's not ready for. Yeah, I think what, you know, at least from my perspective, what I've always tried to do is game plan for who you need to beat, right? Think about, hey, who are the top three or four opponents on my schedule that we have to beat? What's their identity? What type of defense do they play? What's their blitzes like? Um, and then you get into it, too, about 
you know, early on in the summer, we're just going to go, right? We're going to let our defense fire stuff at us. And they're a really good defense. I mean, they're really good. And, uh, you know, our kids will panic and they'll freak out. And I'll be like, it's early. Like, I'm not kidding you right now. The very first time we go full go, they are already have different packages, 20 pressures, whatever, right? And we got to catch up to it. And I just try to tell our kids, like, it's okay. It's going to make you better. Trust me. Right. Uh, but I agree. Right. And we try to be methodical with it. Right. As we're teaching right now, you know, we're teaching against the even front. We're teaching against the odd front, getting comfortable. Then we'll start to blend it. Right. Now we're going to start to make you think a little faster, process faster. But that's my big thing. Hey, take your three, four biggest opponents you're going to see in a year. Game plan to beat them. Right. What do we need to drill? What do we need to do? We need to run X's and O's wise. I'm showing this to you here so you can see there's different ways to carry your hands in this drill. If you don't want to use the PVC pipes, right? We did the PVC pipes for a couple. Now we're going to go hands behind, right? Forcing to try to keep that big butt, big chest, head and shoulder behind knee. Next thing we do is we're going to add the hands in and Coach White's going to come in. He's going to chop and swat at them, right? We want to see our guys. Their hands are light in space. I want to make sure as this guy's setting and Coach White chops or slaps at him, his head and his chest doesn't come with it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Right? If he's too rigid, the moment he gets a swat, he gets a hit, his whole body's going to come with it, right? Now we're going to go two out, one in, right? We're going to work two kicks, one post. Two kicks, one post, right? And we're going to work two out, one in. And they can go four out, two in if you really wanted to, too. Right. So you can do all those different things, all those variations. Oh, wow. That's terrible. Right. We're going to work a little med ball set here. You see this a lot. A lot of times just holding a med ball, you know, setting, keeping your core engaged, being able to set. A big thing for me, guys, is when you set, keeping your weight on your inside foot and guys aren't transferring the weight to their outside foot. You know, that teeter totter, you know, I'm kind of thinking about. So as you set and you get back, you know, at the top of your set, all of your weight's not kicking back to your outside foot, and then you got to rock it back in. That means you're dead. You're bull rush bait, or you're going to get countered at that point. And we'll work a little kind of more set to the angles, right? We're, right now we're adding this PVC pipe in, just staying square, trying to learn like, hey, I'm going to stack that pipe right at that outside swoosh, that outside number, right, is where we're going to get things to. And we got, what I mean about very tempo, first thing we're going to do is we're going to walk, right? We're literally just going to walk together and we're going to stay in this spot. Then we're going to go a little wider. We're going to go a little faster. We're going to speed it up, right? Just giving our guys a landmark on stacking that hand, right? Staying square, stacking that hand as we get through things. Okay. And we call this set on an angle. You call it waterfall. Just setting the three different spots, right? Bringing different rushers, staying square, probably getting a little wide here. Like I said, sometimes this is this was really kind of day one. I think we did this in like February, February or March with our guys, right? And then some redirect drills. I think this is the last thing. This is a warm-up for us, right? Just sprinting out to the coach, right? Working different sets, push, post, kick side, get in, get out right? Warming your guys up, right? Not having our guys just sprint through bags, right? Like our guys don't need to sprint through bags, right? Let's do stuff that's football specific for them, right? That translates to what they need to do, right? Now you're going to work three out, three in, three out, three in, come to a pause, right? That's what we want to make happen on this one. Just working about keeping our body in great leverage, being heavy on our inside foot, Right, come into balance. Right, if guys are really rocking, right, you got to tell them, talk to them about their weight distribution, tell them how it's wrong, tell them how it's gonna, why that's bad. Right, good hip square the whole time, coming to a great balance. That was a really good rep there. Right, now we're working high and low hands. Right, like, hey, when a guy rushes me outside, I'm stacking that high hand at outside logo. He rushes back inside, high hand inside logo. Right, working that with the PVC pipe, so they're just kind of feeling. Right, the switching of the hands and stacking them where they need to be. Right, and we're gonna add. Let me go back here. I didn't in slow mo. Here we go. Tennis ball. Right, working some redirects. Working stacking our hands different locations. Jam grab anchor. Just different body movements. Right. Okay, he's got a soft post. Big thing. He does really good here. This is what a lot of players do bad when they go to redirect inside to step forward. 
right? We want to be flat, right? We want to be flat to get yourself back inside out, right? Does a really good job there. Man, he's going to be good. I guess we're lucky. Okay, so you can see some different drills for you about just different redirects, different movement. I love this one. I hated this one in college. <laughs> I hated it, right, to the point where I just almost walked off the field, right? We call this Raider drill, right? You're going to set five guys up in a soft dish around you. So this guy, you're going to start head up on here. He's head up, so start head up. These guys are a little bit on angles, and these guys are a little bit wider, right? And you can do this different ways. You can give numbers. This is like Simon Says, right? You know, hey, hey, he, he's one, he's two, he's three, he's four, he's five, and just call out a cadence, right? Hey, two, four, one, three, five, whatever. You got set to it, right? Now, my college coach, man, he would he would say like players' last names or what high school they were from. I, like, I don't know where these <laughs> turds are from. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's he's talking about the dude that just came on the team. I'm like, I don't know where he's from. What do you want me to do, right? But just working strikes, right? Working different body movements, right? Staying square. Okay, so think about setting up Simon Says, right, and just creating how you want your kid to set make them set wide first make them redirect make them soft post like you can kind of envision how you can make that player set by those different numbers you call out all right little med ball little med ball redirect here right already holding one set jam soft post strike staying square this is jeremy jeremy stars for three years at a uh, center He's on official visit army right now. Good luck, brother. I don't know. <laughs> got a couple other <laughs> offers too, though, but we got a couple guys get all in these cadet ones. I'm like, all right, man, I don't know. <laughs> all right. And then we got a little two verse one, right? Just a little waterfall set in square, stacking different hands, jam, grab, anchor, and finish. Now, another big thing. I don't know about you guys, but oh, let me get back to this. Holding the pad. We're big. I hate this. We talk about body bagging. Anytime we use hand shields versus the med balls, we want to grab and squeeze that pad tight to our body so it's a real surface. Not this floppy mm -hmm. surface, right, where it's just all over the place. So we're big on teaching our guys they got to body bag the pad so it stays tight to their body and gives as real of a surface as we can. This is a good one. Three verse one in a straight line. All I do as a coach is I stand behind and I tell him which the front guy where to go first. So this guy's going to set, right? That guy's going to come here. He's going to go opposite. And then you get a blitzing linebacker that you have to pretend to blick up, uh, pick up at the end, right? All right. So he's got to post that way. He's got to kick here, right? Keep, he's got to keep his hands up. Boom. But what I really like that he does really good here at the end, those is leverage, right? We talk about our guys about almost like a double uppercut, right? Where I'm dropping my hips and I'm punching up and through you to stop and take away your leverage as you're just barreling down on me. Okay. That's kind of my drills, man. I just want to let everybody know, hey, take a chance. I appreciate it. Hopefully you got something from it. If anybody ever wants to dive into more, please feel free to reach out to me. Would love to talk football with you. It doesn't have to be about sets and strikes and be about anything. Any clinic I do, I like to give other guys other great resources to dive into. Uh, a big one of mine that I really love this off season uh, was was Disciplines of a Godly Man. Right, it challenges you in seventeen different ways about uh, how you know you need to discipline. Discipline as a parent, discipline in your marriage, uh, discipline in different walks of life. Uh, X's and O's wise, older book, but fantastic. As an offensive coordinator, I wish I read it earlier. Developing offensive game plan by Brian Billick is going to kind of open your eyes or re-solidify or give you some good viewpoints on situational football and practice math and game math and tying it all together. And then developing offensive game plan is on Coach Tube kind of ties in together too with that. That's been my big pursuit this offseason. So I wanted to give you guys a couple of resources I've enjoyed um, in my offseason. I'll just put this up here one more time in case anybody needs to uh, – have a way to reach out to me. Uh, but, I, hey, man, I appreciate you guys uh, for having me. 
uh, it was a blast, man, getting able to actually present and talk football and not be the the, the script guy doing our side of stuff, right? <laughs> Give us a chance. Check us out. I promise you, you'll, you'll probably like what we're doing, too. It's a little bit different than this, but I think if you're a football <clears throat> junkie, you'll like it. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, the same thing. We know there's other people out there doing the same thing as us. And just like we hope people try us that are in someone else's base, you know, you know, give coach a listen and check it out. Now, now, coach, we're not done yet. Just because you finished your man. presentation doesn't mean we're done. That's good. My wife just brought me <laughs> so, some pizza down. You know Matt, I mean? I'm going to let you. Wife. Matt, I know you'll have a couple things you can fire away. And then I'll, Come on. I'll ask our last question, like always. <laughs> yeah, coach, I mean, I mean, the big takeaway here is you, you have a lot of drills there that you can compile together to keep it fresh, as you said, for your players. Make sure they're working on something different every day, but it's all working for the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. We're all working the pass protection, but you're finding different ways to get there. I thought there's a lot of good stuff there that coaches can go through and pull um, and using some <clears throat> simple things in the off season. I'll tell all you right. one thing. Let me, let me top in here. And then one thing we did yeah. that was new is uh, you know, we get a 10-minute special teams period. We're going to take all the big boys, the big the BDBs. I'll tell you what that means off screen, right? We're going to take the, B- the BDBs, and we'll set up a circuit, right? Now that we've taught all those drills over the off season, we'll set up mm. four or five stations, and we'll walk around, and we'll coach the players. We'll take four or five upperclassmen and make them the leaders of that group, and we'll rotate them around a little everyday circuit. Right. And so we're going to work run footwork on boards. We're going to work push posts. We're going to work all these different things to knock that out of the way. So then we can go ahead and go two man combos, half line, do some other stuff. Right. So just didn't mean to steal your thing, but it's a big thing that we saw. You know, everybody's seen circuits with other things. I saw an offensive line circuit. I'm like, oh my God, we got to do this. Right. Like, let's steal some extra time doing that. Our players should know the drills by now. It's been great for us. We love it. Um, Pass protection wise, coach. Mm-hmm. You said you see a lot of odd fronts. What's your go to protection? Man, we got a lot of guys listening. Protection, right. protection island. You get one protection yeah. on this island. We, we de- don't have that many Ohio <laughs> listeners, so you know. It depends. It de- it de- I like how good is your center, <clears throat> right? How good is your center? So you know, if you have, if you're facing a lot of even front teams, I feel like you can hide a center, right? Yes. He's going to be able to set to a gap. He's going to be able to work with somebody. Run game, pass game, you got a good nose over top of you or you're not that good at center. Like I, We're a spread team. We're a multiple spread team. Like We'll probably run 30 to 35 formations and six to seven different personnel groupings. But if that snaps wrong, we're in trouble, right? It throws off everything. So typically we start there. All right. We look at where's the blitz is coming from. Can we get for hat for hat? We'll stay a combo protection or we'll switch to maybe a little bit more of a man protection where our back has a different read to answer your question. It kind of just depends on what are we seeing. Gotcha. That so, answers like, my question. That's the big thing we do is that's where we start from. We'll game plan that. And in our scouting report, we'll literally put a cut up of all the blitzes, all the drawings, We'll rank them one, two, three, four, let the kids see them. And uh, we'll actually, by Monday morning when they get that, they're already going to know what their pass protection rules are, right? So they know that that's in the game plan. They know how we're going to set things, where we're going to call things to. And then we do a ton of just pass, blitz, pick up, walkthrough stuff a lot in the week too. Yeah, that walkthrough stuff so important for your offensive lineman to see it physically on game week before you're actually running through it and see it in the game. Yeah, and I mean sometimes we'll just scoot, we'll we'll do two reps. We'll go walk it and then rep it, right? So we'll actually have our offensive lineman just stand up and watch it, and then we'll go rep it just so we're kind of seeing it and train our eyes. Absolutely. Okay. All right, I got one. Um, so, coach, you know the only thing I have to do to compare this is defensive stuff and. I, you know, I started, even though I've been in DC for a long time, I started off as DB's coach and it's very similar the way you're talking about independent hands. You know, we talk about offhand jam and it's okay mm-hmm. if I miss with this hand. Cause now I can turn and get with this hand and everything. So the one thing, you know, as DB's when we're pressing, we know we always want to offhand jam on anything outside, but on inside, we had the ability to do more of the two hand stuff because right. We're just compressing routes at that point. Is there any kind of tie in there where it's you talk about more of that independent hands as they work outside, but if they work inside, maybe you can use both hands more. In t- you know, I'm just curious at this point. I think it's is the there, surface. Is there any crossover there? I or? think so. I think at times. I think with, if a guy's 
head up and he's really going in. A lot of times I'm just trying to get my hands there. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, you know, a lot of it is just of the surface of what, of what you're getting. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, a lot of times for linemen, if he's trying to go inside, I might just be trying to bury him inside, right? Yeah. I'm going to try to use my weight or my size and bury him down in. Uh, but once again, it's about that chest, right? What you see, what picture you have. You know, the old school thing used to be like a one, two, three, four. You used to have these different ideas. Like if it was a one rush, it was here. If it was a two rush, it was there. You know, that's kind of what we had in college. So I think it's a big part about training your eyes on what you're seeing. Yeah, no, it's a really good point. All right. So Coach Stout, every podcast, we in the same way, we ask uh, every guest, at least their first time on uh, this question. And we'll give you a little bit of time as we ask it. Okay. Um, and we ask Coach, you know, what is the coolest or most unique thing about your program that maybe not a lot of other people do? And it can be anything across the board. It can be football, uh, you Man. know, off season. It can be culture, what's, anything. What's the coolest or most <clears throat> unique thing other people don't do? Yeah, either other people don't do or, or you haven't seen a lot of places that you guys do. You know, what's what's unique to your school? Okay, I might answer this <laughs> two ways. All right. No, that's perfect. I'm, I'm answer this two ways. This is what's coming to my head. And it's so one here in Columbus, a lot of the suburbs. So we're a suburb of Columbus, Ohio. Right. We're one of the largest. We're one of the largest schools in Columbus. We're one of the few schools that's a one high school town, though. So yeah. a lot of the schools in our area have two, three, four high schools in it. Right. The really cool thing about our town is it's one school. Right. Very right. unique to at our level where we're at. You know, our conference has 32 teams, four divisions. Uh, but we're one of the few schools that is actually a one high school town. Before I ever moved to Columbus, uh, I wasn't used to that, right? Like my first head coaching job, I was, uh, you know, I, I coached at a school with three high schools and uh, you had no feeder programs under you, right? Couldn't even talk to the the, the younger guys until like a, April, May, right? So like it just was, you had no continuity. You had no ability of who's coming up, who's not. It's really unique for us, at least in our area, of being a, a public one high school town uh, at our size. Two, I think one of the coolest things that I think is is maybe somewhat unique to us um, is going to a team camp. I had never been to a team camp in my entire life, right? In terms of football, I've been doing it when I was a basketball player, but never went to a full team camp in football. Um, kind of just thought like, what's the point? You can practice at home, right? You know what I mean? Um, and then I went to one and saw it, right? And so we go to our team camp and we're going to get six to seven practices in, in about two and a half days, right? We're going to get our kids away from mom and dad. Nobody can be late for a practice because you're all on the same site, right? We're going to get a ton of football, a ton of film, a ton of team building. Like we do, uh, you know, rookie nights, we do vote for captains then have captains speak who want to be it um we do sometimes get them up at 2 30 in the morning and sprint to the indoor and just say hey it's <laughs> it's time to reinforce some points and see if you can compete a little bit um uh, but i think what's really unique is we grow together a lot in that time period like we grow a lot from a football standpoint because we're actually able to be in pads at that point like here in ohio we can't be in pads until last week of july we have no spring ball so that's the very first time we're able to put pads on a little bit earlier than everybody else. Absolutely go after each other and inside run and scripted periods, but then just come together a lot as a team, as coaches and as players. Um, and I love it. And, and to me, I think those are kind of two unique things. I know other people kind of do it, but those are kind yeah. of the two that popped in my head off the, off the rip. No, that's perfect. And, you know, there's a reason why we asked that question because we're interested, right? There's, there's, you know, one or two things that normally every coach talks about that you just don't hear from a lot of other places. Yeah. And that's, that's why we use that question because we, we love the answers we get. Um, so perfect. Well, um, thanks for tuning in. If you're listening again, uh, we have coach Stout here. He's kind of flashed up his contact information a few times. If you want to get in contact with us, you can email us at the board drill podcast at gmail.com. You can DM us on Twitter at board drill pod. Follow us on TikTok, Bordro Pod, if you're into that. Um, and then also, again, kind of the new thing that we've talked about is we release articles every Thursday on Substack. So tune into that. If you haven't got a chance, subscribe to that. You know, read some of our articles. Matt just did his first one. So he, we were really excited yeah. to get Matt writing finally. So that was a, a big thing. Matt looks and, the guy that looks like a guy that can't spell. A, I can tell. I'm a, 
I can tell. I'm, I'm a math guy. He's a math yeah. teacher. I can tell it's... Matt can't spell. Matt, you married? He Not yet. Engaged. He's about. He's to be engaged. Married. Matt's fiance is definitely pure in his stuff. I can tell. <laughs> yeah. Now it's absolutely. It's, it, it, and it's fantastic, and, and we're venturing into that. Um, so Matt wrote a little article on Troy and kind of a screen pass they used to to beat up on Western Kentucky and win that game. And then this Thursday, we're releasing – or the next two, we're releasing a couple things on the Ohio Bobcat defense, which were number four in the nation on total defense. So kind of a cool thing there. You're from Ohio, so this is kind of perfect well, timing. My best friend played there. Yep. <laughs> there yep. you go. Yep. So, uh, I hear about them so, all the time. So I expect you to read the articles I'm releasing on the Bobcats the next two weeks. <laughs> <All right. laughs> One's on stunts, so you should love that as an O-line coach. But, Coach, thanks again for coming on. We really enjoyed this. We definitely got to link up some other time and uh, and definitely have a little more collabs with the podcast. Absolutely. We'd love to do it, help each other grow. I appreciate being on it. You just let me know anytime. Absolutely. All right. Have a good night. Appreciate it.